A security management system is simply a means by which an entity can satisfy itself its meeting the requirements of aviation security regulation. But it goes beyond compliance. It embraces, in fact, as the building block for creating a security culture. It isn't just about doing what you must do. It's about doing what you believe you should do in order to make your customers' journeys safer and more secure. If you have a SEMS in place and fully functioning, then you know yourselves that you are achieving the aviation security performance that A, you're required to produce by law, but also the performance that you as an organization aspire to. It gives you the data by which you can satisfy your board that you are achieving all of the requirements of aviation security. And most importantly, it will build an aviation security culture in your organization that will take you to new heights of aviation security performance. When an entity considers setting up a SEMS, it should look at its existing processes. SEMS should not be an expensive thing to set up. It shouldn't be a different process, a new process. It should use those tools, whether they're IT-based or non-IT-based, that you're currently using to satisfy yourselves that your security performance is where it needs to be. It is about marshalling those in a coherent way to give you a good oversight on your overall security performance within your entity. SEMS isn't a single process, it's a collection of processes and indeed it underpins security culture. All of these things evolve and therefore your SEMS process is one of constant evolution. It should be owned by the board and the board should reflect very frequently is the SEMS giving them the information that they require to satisfy themselves that they're achieving the level of aviation security performance that they want. It's about being innovative it's about being reflective. It's about constantly challenge yourself as to whether SEMS is producing the picture of your aviation security performance that you need in order to fulfill your obligations. One of the most tangible benefits for the adoption of SEMS is the ability to satisfy yourselves at board level that the entity is delivering the aviation security performance that A is required to by regulation, but also it's achieving the security performance that the entity wants for its customers. It allows the building of an effective security culture, something highlighted in ICAO's year of security culture. The SEMS is the foundation for creating that process. At the end of the day, a SEMS would allow you to be sure that your aviation security performance is where you want it to be, where it needs to be, and where your customers ultimately would want it to be. The implementation of SEMS won't change the regulatory process in the short term, but it will allow us to move towards a more risk-based oversight approach. Where a robust SEMS exists within an entity, they are able to do effectively what CA auditors do in satisfying themselves that they're meeting the requirements of the aviation security regulations. That allows us to have much more constructive conversations with industry so that we can start looking at where their risks actually are. Rather than repeat activity that's been done time and time again, we can look more specifically about those areas of high risk or those areas of underperformance. Ultimately, that will translate into a refreshed approach to oversight, hopefully much more largely based on risk. I think it's important to, to understand that SEMS is not one size fits all. If you're a large airline or a large cargo operator, then clearly your SEMS will be complex, reflecting the complexity of your business. At the other end of the spectrum, then the SEMS needs to be as complex as it needs to be for your specific business. And with smaller businesses, providing you're able to satisfy yourselves 
that the data you collect in your SEMS allows you to make a judgment on your security performance, then that is fine. So size isn't everything, it's the effectiveness of the SEMS that matters. SEMS, after all, is simply a risk management process. It allows, in this instance, for security risk to be managed. There is no difference in broad principle with safety risk. So ultimately, there should be no barrier at all at having simply a risk management system, which incorporates safety, security, maybe health and safety. So integration of management systems, in my view, ought to be an aspiration for entities to achieve in the fullness of time. And whereas you may start out with the spoke SEMS, then perfectly possible uh, to align it with your management systems as you mature and develop. When developing a SEMS, I think it's essential for simply the strongest business case possible to make the best use of existing resources. It's our belief that the resources very largely already exist in an entity for SEMS to be effective. However, it may require additional coordination, it may require addition, additional collation, so there may well be uh, resource implications. Um, but we do not see this as a particularly challenging issue for industry. And indeed, experience from around industry of those that have developed a SEMS, then they make the point that A, it is not particularly resource intensive, and the business case is very strong for the resources, additional resources they have to employ to achieve an effective SEMS.